But yeah, what's your opinion on clean architecture? Do you use it yourself? And what's the difference to normal MVVM in a quick summary? Okay, this is a fun topic. So clean architecture as an original concept, it, it just basically said, if you have a third party dependency that you don't trust, then you create an interface so that you don't see it. And then you can swap it out later to like have matching behavior, but, uh, but without depending on the exact specific thing, right? While that somehow managed to become on an, in the Android world that things should be data domain presentations split up at top level modules. You have a data layer that's specifically and separate. You that should both have the database and the network for whatever unknown reason, then you would have this domain which has these uh, nebulous use cases that sometimes do something, but in every single sample code you see, it's literally just either doing what the data layer should be doing or just delegating directly to the data layer. So that's when you realize that you're, you either don't have use cases and your app is doing nothing or your domain layer is like lying to you. I don't know. <laughs> so you had this domain layer, uh, which in the worst scenarios uh, was also like platform agnostic, even though it, the code was always only ever used on Android. So any benefit of trying to like make it multi-platform compatible was like completely needless. Like you impose these restrictions and you're not even relying on it. So why are you doing it? <laughs> I actually think we can combine the topic of clean architecture and testing and really put this into another episode because then we can go into more detail because I have questions about testing specifically. And maybe we can combine this with clean architecture because this is also about separation and modularization oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So maybe we do another episode for these topics to go into more detail about them. What do you think about that? So that means that we've finished now? Um, we, you can still add stuff that you think is important for the topics we covered, but we will cover testing and also, uh, I guess, Kotlin multi-platform is also interesting. In a yeah, later topic. KIM will have to be elsewhere in that regard. Like, But everything that you think is still important to cover now, you can just tell us now. Okay, sure. So the issue with this clean architecture setup that people talk about as clean architecture is that data domain presentation split. It's considered an anti-pattern. And I don't know why people are still doing it. I have an article on it explaining how even the original author who said that, yeah, this is clean architecture, you should do this, eventually wrote an article three years later saying that this does not scale, don't do it ever. So that's why it's funny how you just see this pop up, you go to a sample code and it says data domain presentation and you're like, oh God, not again. <laughs> it's literally worse than having them in one module. I'm not joking. It's literally worse because the split is wrong. You when you need to make a feature change, you would modify each of the modules, uh, all three of them each time, which is oppositional to the idea of modules being separate independent entities. They are supposed to represent boundaries between your code. And if you need to modify all three of them <laughs> for each feature in any of the app, then something went horribly wrong. So, so in that regard for modularization, uh, just pretend you're writing retrofit, like the actual library, and that's how you will end up with an API that makes sense and pretend that versions would cause breaking changes because they would, because it's a library. So if you want to like create good modularization, then this is what you have to keep in mind that someone will consume this as a library and that any breaking change would be breaking to those consumers. That way you can ensure proper boundary separation between your components. But this is pretty rare when it comes to apps. Uh, in apps, what you see most of the time is screen-based modularization, which can be okay. One time I had to swap out Google Maps with Huawei Maps and I had to do that at a module level. So in that regard, this modularization scheme was actually useful. There are many times when it's not, but in this case it was. Um, any other tips on top of that? I have an article on it on how you shouldn't do what the Google I.O. talk said in 2018, 
because they basically told you that if you want to do cross-module uh, communication, just use reflection, and that's <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> like, you're not supposed to have to know about another module that you're not depending on. At that point, you could be depending on it, and that way you would not even need reflection. You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even think about the idea of using reflection to do it. And that's basically what people were doing when they were like, okay, we, we created this tool that generated the activity names in a global module so that we know all the activities in the app. Like, you're not supposed to do that. You're only supposed to talk to the parent. You don't know about the others. <laughs> You've just coupled your modules together. This is the opposite of a modular design.